Hello and good evening. Welcome to our triumphant Tuesdays in the Word. Um, we are so grateful to God that you were able to uh, tune in, to dial in, and to log in uh, here and to be with us here on tonight. Let's take our Bibles and, and let's get right to the Word of God uh, found in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55. Uh, we're going to read for you verse number 10 and verse number 11. Listen at what the Word of God says. It says, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, for it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say thanks be unto God. Let's take our Bible and let's make our statement of faith uh, here on today. This is my Bible, and I believe what it says. I can have what it says I can have. I can be what it says I can be, and I can do what it says I can do. Amen. Praise God. Again, we thank you and we welcome you to our triumphant Tuesdays. Uh, in the word here on today and again we are in the Old Testament book of Isaiah Isaiah chapter chapter 55 Isaiah chapter 55 verses number 10 and 11 verse number 10 and 11 and and, and for a controlling thought uh, here here on tonight looking at those verses uh, just to give us some hope um, th these two verses help us to see that the believer has hope because God's, let's see, God's word will do what he said it will do. God's word will do what he said it will do. In other words, whatever God says, if he says it's going to happen, it's going to come to pass. I, I just got convicted when I stated that. Um, because um, uh, when I stated that, it made me think about uh, some things that he has revealed to me um, in dreams and night visions. And however, my reality has not given me any indications um, that what I, what I saw in the night visions, in the dream, I didn't see it in my reality. And, I, and I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you, being candid and transparent with you here on tonight. In fact, because my reality did not line up with what he had shown me, what he had said to me and shown me in the vision. But because my now didn't look like what he said, um, I'm going to be honest. I got upset with God. And for a while, my communication with him had stopped. In fact, um, I stopped doing uh, things that would, that would help or line up with what he said in the vision. However, these two verses here, my brothers and sisters, it takes and it gives a person like myself and I pray it'll give someone like you, it'll take and it'll give you some, um, some encouragement to hang on, to hold on, and to not lose hope, and to not lose hope. If God be God, oh glory, if God be God, whatever he said, uh, it will come to pass. And these two verses that lie before us, uh, they help us out, they help us out, help me out help me out. I, I'll just, I guess, invite you in as I teach this lesson to myself here on tonight and just look at these two verses and the encouragement that these two verses gives to the child of God. Listen at those verses again for those just joining us. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10 and 11. Allow me to read it again. It says, for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my, my, my word be that goes out from my mouth. 
It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Um, these verses that we have here before us, are, they are about the undeniable um, superiority of God's plan. And now here the prophet Isaiah, um, he puts the focus on the absolute reality of everything that God says or plans. Specifically, in the immediate context, God is assuring the audience about the availability of forgiveness, that's those preceding verses, to all who come to him and repent. Look back there at Isaiah 55, verse number 7. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his uh, thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. That's in Isaiah 55, verse 7, because it's, it's there in that seventh verse that God gave his commitment that he will respond with compassion to all of those that seek him. He will respond with compassion to all of those that seek him. Here now in our verses, the prophet, he lets the audience know um, that this is a promise that they can count on. And in order to make, um, to make the, uh, the point um, um, absolutely clear so that everyone can understand the point, what the prophet does is that the prophet, he develops a, a comparison, a just as and a so, just as, kaser in the Hebrew um, and and so kin in the Hebrew kin in the Hebrew um, comparison between what happens in nature and what happens uh, with God's word. He makes this comparison. He develops a comparison: uh, nature and then the word, nature and the word. So uh, here it is in verse number ten. He says, "For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven." And do not return there, but water the earth, making it to bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Here, the nature, uh, the nature world takes and it illustrates uh, for us God's wild claim. Listen at the text again. He says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven which means that God gives us examples he in nature that takes and reassures and reminds us of, of how effective his word is. God's, God's word will do what he said it will do. He, he, he shows us here by looking at the rain and the snow um, as to the efficacy of the word of God. Um, he talks about the rain and he talks about the snow. Uh, rain, brothers and sisters, it is a liquid, uh, it is liquid water rather, uh, in the form of droplets that have taken and condensed uh, from the atmospheric water vapor and then become so heavy um, that they begin to fall under the gravity, fall because of gravity. And, and we got to understand this rain is a major component of the water cycle and is responsible for depositing most of the fresh water on earth. And then he talks about snow. Snow it comprises of individual crystals um, that grow while suspended in the atmosphere. And they are they're suspended in the atmosphere, usually within clouds, and then they fall and they accumulate on the ground. Watch this, serving as a thermal insulator, conserving the heat of the earth and protecting crops from sub-freezing uh, sub weather. In some agricultural areas, they depend on snow um, because um, during the winter, the snow, it accumulates and then it gradually melts in the spring, providing water for the crops to grow. And so, um, um, brothers and sisters, the text here talks about rain and snow. 
And the verse identifies that the rain and the snow has a purpose. It has a purpose to water the earth and make it to bring forth and sprout, giving seed, it says, to the sower and bread to the eater. Note how, note how the rain and the snow comes down and then goes into the earth. And then it brings what is in the earth out of the earth. Look at the gift, this gift, the gift of rain, the gift of snow. Look at this gift um, of rain and snow coming down and entering into the earth. But then when that gift enters into the earth, that gift then causes for another gift, crops to then grow. And then that gift, crops, then produces fruit, um, produces, produces produces fruit that 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 one can take and uh, grain and fruit you can take and harvest and you can eat and you can have life. It says it says it gives seed to the sower and then it gives it gives it gives bread to the eater. Um, here it is the seeds the seeds um, that the person possesses, the person that possesses the seed, um, they find themselves having more because because you have seeds and now you can plant more and rain will fall again, snow will fall again. Seed has been planted in the ground, causing more crops to grow, causing more uh, more more fruit and causing more more vegetables to grow. Um, and then you have food that you can eat more seed in the then more seed to put back into the ground rain that didn't fall from heaven um, snow that didn't fall from heaven these gifts from above fall into the earth causing what is in the earth to come out of the earth producing agriculture producing crops producing a harvest for the one who has sown the seed. Brothers and sisters, this takes and it lets us know, brothers and sisters, that that good gifts, they come down from above. I hear James talking about this in James chapter number one, verse 16 and 18. Um, he says, he says, don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the earth, from the Father, rather, uh, of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shine, shifting shadows. He chose um, to give us birth through the word of truth that he might be a kind of uh, first fruit of all he created. All good, it says, every good and perfect gift. You see that in the text? Every good and every perfect gift it takes and it comes down. It comes down from the father of the heavenly of the heavenly lights. And so here in our text, we have this imagery um, about the snow and the rain. And when the snow and the rain comes down, brothers and sisters, it is very effective. When the rain falls, grass grows. When the rain falls, um, 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 trees grow. When the rain fall, uh, corn, it grows. When the rain fall, vegetation, it, it grows. It grows. The rain is effective. Snow, when it falls, it, it then when it melts over the course of time, the runoff goes into the rivers. The rivers help for there to be irrigation and irrigation is nothing more than watering, uh, more crops and more plants and causing for that, uh, brothers and sisters, to take and to grow in these gifts, it comes from, from, from above. Make no mistake about it. Watch what the imagery here is portraying. The imagery is portraying that the snow and the rain coming down from heaven, um, it is, brothers and sisters, uh, it, is a, it is a portrait of life. It is a portrait of life. And and we are we are we're 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 talking about moisture, uh, rain and snow 
coming down and water. Um, it brings fertility to the ground and it, it, it is reliable because when it comes down from above, when it comes down from above, brothers and sisters, and fall, um, fall to the earth, brothers and sisters, uh, it mediates, it mediates growth. It mediates growth. And in it mediating growth, brothers and sisters, uh, um, we are looking um, at life. We are looking at life. Rain here, brothers and sisters. Snow here, brothers and sisters, coming down from above to the earth, bringing forth, causing the earth to bring forth and to sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Rain here is symbolizing um, life, and it in and, and whenever there is the symbolism of life. It is a symbol of the blessing of God. Rain often is used, saints of God, in the text as, as a symbol of the blessing of the blessing of God. Let's look at a couple of scriptures that helps us out. A couple of scriptures that help us out. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 12. Again, these verses are scriptures that help us to see that rain it symbolizes God's blessing, symbolizes God's blessing. Deuteronomy chapter 28 uh, and verse number 12. It says the Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain to your land and it, in its season and to bless all the work of your hands and you shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow. Again, rain symbolizes God's blessing. That was Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 and 12. Let's go to 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 35 through 36. And it says, when heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, if they pray towards this place, and acknowledge your name and turn from their sin when you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive, uh, forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, when you teach them the good way in which they should walk and grant, here it is, the blessing, reign upon your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. You saw that in that passage you saw that in that passage when 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 sinfulness when they were sinfulness when they were disobedient uh, heavens closed and there was no rain but when they repent that same passage says that he he's going to open up heaven and cause the rain to take and to water water the land L let's go over to Isaiah chapter 30 Isaiah chapter 30 and uh, let's look at verse number 23 Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number 23 it says, it says, um, and he will give rain for the seed. Again, I told you, rain symbolizes God's blessing. Isaiah 30, 23, and he will give rain for the seed with which you sow uh, the ground and bread on um, the produce of the ground, which will be rich and plenteous. In that day, your livestock will graze in large pastures. Do you see that rain in the Bible symbolizes God's blessing? Let's go over to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse number 26. Listen at the word of God, Ezekiel 34 and 26. Again, rain, it symbolizes um, God's blessing, fertility, life. Uh, here it is, Ezekiel 34, 26, and it says, And I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. Here it is. And I will send down the showers in their season. They shall be showers of blessing. Rain symbolizes, it symbolizes, it symbolizes God's blessing. Let's go over to Joel, Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2 and verse 23, listen at what it says. It says, be glad, O children of Zion, uh, and rejoice in the Lord your God, uh, for he has given the early rain for your, uh, for your vindication, for your vindication, 
uh, he has poured down uh, for you abundant rain, the early uh, and the latter rain as before. And so we see in the Bible how rain it takes and it, it symbolizes the blessing from God. Here in our text in Isaiah 55, um, um, it shows us, it talks about how the rain and how the snow comes down from heaven and it waters the earth and it causes the earth to sprout forth, giving seed um, to the sower and, and bread um, that you might eat. Bread, it says, um, for, 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 for those to eat, bread to eat, gives seed for the sower. And then here's the overflow. It also gives bread to eat. Brothers and sisters, rain here in the text and the snow, it is seen as being effective. It will come down and it will do exactly what it will do. And then here, uh, when he goes to make the comparison um, to help us to see and look at nature, whenever we need encouragement, he says, look at nature, look at nature, look at the rain, look at the snow. And does the rain not come down from above? I told you, good gifts come from above. Uh, rain, it symbolizes the blessings of God. Showed you that in a few scriptures. But then here, it tells us that the rain in verse number 10 it takes and it hits the earth, waters the earth, making making what's in the earth come out of the earth to produce seed for the sower and then bread for the sower as well. But look at what happens in verse number 11. Verse number 11, um, it goes on, and here's that comparison showing us how effective God's word is. So how it's showing us the efficacy, how effective the efficacy of God's word. Look at verse 11. He says, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. So God through the prophet says, listen. Um, you want an example of how effective my word is. Look at the rain and look at the snow and see how the rain and how the snow, um, how the rain and how the snow um, comes down and it waters and it waters the earth. It makes that vegetation, makes crops to grow, makes, makes for plants to grow. And then he goes on and he goes further. And then he says here, um, he says that it gives seed, that's in verse 10, to the sower and bread for them to eat. Verse 11, he says, so shall my word be that goes out from my, from my mouth. It, it, it helps us to see, um, brothers and sisters, how, um, how, how the word of God, it helps us to see, saints of God, how, um, how, how God's word, uh, it is, it is effective, how God's word, uh, it is effective. Let's go over um, to the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy. If you have your Bible, you have your electronic device, Deuteronomy chapter 32 um, and verse number two, and listen at what it says. It says, my teaching uh, drops as the rain, my speech distilled as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon, upon the herb. And so here it is, brothers and sisters, um, God's word is, is, is drawn in this text um, um, to a symbolize or to a comparison rather to that of the rain. Rain is a blessing from God and rain is a blessing from God. And the parallel here is that the word comes down um, and it goes into your heart just like the rain comes down from above. The word comes down from above. The rain enters the earth. The word should enter your heart. The rain causes what's in the earth to come out of the earth. The word should cause, go into the into your heart and cause what in you, what God has designed and destined you to be, to come out of you. The word um, then leaves you uh, with the seed because like the text says, the rain it gives and then it causes for um, the earth to bring forth and give seed to the sower and bread for them to eat. 
So the word will cause what God has designed you to be to come out of you. And then what's in you, watch what the word does. The word will give you a seed that you can sow. The word will not only give you a seed that you can sow, but then it also give you bread that you can eat. Good God almighty. The word, when it gets in you, it'll give you to cause what God has put in you to come out of you. And when it comes out of you, it will, it will, it will watch this. It will, it will cause for there to be seed for you and bread for you. Seed that you can sow some more, that you can grow some more. Bread so that you would have food to satisfy your belly and your body. Rain, brothers and sisters, it says in the text, um, it's going to come down from heaven and it will do what it is intended to do, um, what it is intended to do. And that is to have an impact on the earth. Rain has an impact on the earth and the people who live there. Rain has an impact on the earth because it causes the flower to bud. Rain causes an impact on the earth because it causes crop to grow rain causes and have an impact on the earth because it, it it causes produce the producing of production the producing of fruit um rain has an impact on earth because the rain causes um um causes the production the producing of seeds rain has an impact on the earth because uh, rain it causes um, brothers and sisters uh, um, to provide food for people on the earth. And so the prophet here takes and he draws this comparison to the rain and the snow to God's word. And he draws this comparison and says that just as the rain and the snow is effective and have an impact on the earth and the people that live there, so too does God's word have an impact on the earth and the people that live there. God's word has the function of producing fruit in people, and it has the function of feeding them on something that is more important than mere bread. I, I hear the word of God uh, in the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, where it says that man shall not live on bread alone. But by every word that proceeds or that proceeds or that comes out of the mouth of God, food alone is not going to help you to make it and help you to get by and help you to get through. You need the word of God. You need the word of God. Um, the central comparison is that just as rain in the text cannot fall on the earth without fulfilling the role that God gave it. So, too, God's word cannot fall from God's mouth in heaven without fulfilling the role that God gave it on earth. Let me say that again. The central comparison, the central comparison in this text is that just as um, um, rain cannot fall um, from heaven to earth without fulfilling the role that God gave it, so too, God's word cannot fall from God's mouth in heaven down to earth without fulfilling the purpose in which God gave it. Look at that 11th verse again and look at what it says. He said, my word, my word, my word um, um, that goes out from me, from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty. It shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. God, brothers and sisters, does not make impotent threats. <laughs> Let me say that again. God does not make impotent threats. That means that if God says something is going to happen, brothers and sisters, you best believe it. He does not make impotent threats. There is power in what God says. God does not make empty promises. When he makes a promise, it will come through. And when he talks, people should listen. They should listen 
um, because because what he predicts it actually it it, it actually will happen. It, it actually will happen. And then when God swears something, it will certainly happen because he speaks with integrity and faithfulness and faithfulness. He does not. Um, and then when God and the other thing about God is that when he speaks his word, he doesn't say, oh, let me retract that statement. Let me pull that back. He does not take back his statements. Um, Isaiah 45 um, verse number 23 says, by myself, I have sworn for my mouth has gone out uh, in, in righteousness uh, from my mouth, rather, um, has gone out in righteousness, a word that shall not return. I told you he does not take back his statements. Look, as it goes on, it says to me, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear allegiance. When God speaks, saints of God, listen at me. When God speaks, um, he externalizes who he is. When God speaks, he externalizes who he is. His words represents his values. His words, number one, represents his values. Secondly, watch this, how God externalizes who he is. He externalizes who he is. Number one, his word represents his values. When he speaks, he externalizes who he is. Secondly, because his words represent his will. His words represent his will. Thirdly, watch this. God, when he speaks, he externalizes who he is. Thirdly, watch this, because his words represent his existence. Let me give those three to you again. When God speaks, he externalizes who he is. How do we see this? Number one. His word represents his values. Number two, his words represents his will. Number three, his words represents his existence. Our text takes and it shows that God's word, God's words accomplish the plans and the pleasures of God. Let me say that again. God's words accomplish the plans and the pleasures of God. God's thoughts, God's words, and God's plans are powerful. For all he had to do in the beginning was to speak. Whatever he thought and he spoke in the beginning, it came. You read Genesis chapter number one and you look at how he spoke. He spoke and lights came into existence. He spoke and the fowls of the air began to fly. He spoke and the fish began to swim. When he spoke um, these things, that which was not came into existence. And so his thoughts and his words and his plans are powerful because all he had to do was to speak and the world was created. Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 10. Let me start to bring this to a close on tonight. Isaiah 41 and verse number 10. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. We can rejoice, brothers and sisters, because whatever God says, it's going to come to pass. And so this passage of scripture that tells us to fear not, why do we have no reason to fear? We have no reason to fear because God has said and declared in his word that I am with you. He declared in this Isaiah 41 10 text that I am your God. He declared in this Isaiah 41 10 text that I will strengthen you. He declared that in this Isaiah 41 10 text that I will help you. He declared that I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And here in our text in verse 10 and verse 11 of the 55th chapter, it is talking about God's word is, is effective. God's word will do what he said that he will do. Just as the rain and the snowfall, as the rain has an impact on the earth and it accomplishes that in which it was designed to accomplish, so too will my word. And so when he tells you that you don't have reason to fear because I'm with you, then don't be afraid, brothers and sisters. We can become worried and concerned 
but we have no reason to fear. Let me give you something else to rejoice about. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number three, it says that you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Well, again, if the rain comes down and it has an impact on earth and if his word is like the rain and just as the rain never, ever missed the mark, never, ever um, failed um, to fulfill its function. God, God Almighty, his word will never, ever fail to fulfill its function. It says here that he's going to keep your mind in perfect peace, which then tells me, brother and sisters uh, that we need to know that we can rejoice because and we got hope because God's word declares that he'll keep our mind in perfect peace if you keep our mind stayed on him let me give you another one Isaiah 43 and 2 Isaiah 43 and 2 I like this part of this word and I can keep going through a whole lot of scriptures and show you why you should rejoice um, based upon what his word says and if his word will do what it what he said um, it will do then then there's reason to rejoice and so let me give you another reason to rejoice Isaiah 43 2 look at this here it is there's not the promise that you will not have trouble there's not the promise that you won't go through something look at what the text says it says when you pass through the waters meaning that you're going to go through something when you pass through the waters here it is why we rejoice because his word says what his word says and then whatever his word says he will do it look at the text he says I will be with you which means that listen when you go through the waters he didn't promise that you won't go through them but he says when you pass through the waters look at what God says he says I'm gonna be right there by your side when you go through the rivers look at what he promised they shall not overwhelm you, meaning meaning they won't go over your head um, and, 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 and then it won't be overwhelming. You know, that's when people start to get frantic and frail and, and, and frazzled and, and start getting nervous and losing their appetite and losing their sleep. But the promise is, is that they will not overwhelm you. And then look at this here thing. He didn't promise that you won't go through some heated situations. The text says when you go walk through the fire, when you walk through the fire, Look at what it says. You shall not be burned. That which has the power, brothers and sisters, to burn you will be rendered ineffective against you. Good God almighty. And then when he says the flame shall not consume you, it's not that you will not go through the waters. It's not that you will not have fiery situations. But the good news is, he says, when you pass through, meaning you won't stay there. He says, when you walk through the fire, meaning that you can go walk through, meaning exerting calmness and go through the fire. And the good news is, is that the effects of the water in the river will not have an effect on you. Bless God's holy and righteous name. Earlier in this Isaiah passage, Isaiah said in the 40th chapter, verse number eight, Here's the good news again, saints of God, that because God's word is effective and because God, God's word um, 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 will do what he said it will do, here is good news. He said, Isaiah 40 and 8 says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. Meaning his word will be here and it will always be here. And the efficacy, the effectiveness, the powerfulness of God's word, um, the functionality of God's word, um, the functionability. And I know I'm just making up some words, uh, but 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 to describe his word, um, there's nothing in the English vernacular, no, no, no language upon no tongue on this earth that can truly embrace um, with 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 all with all um let's see what's with, with all the ability um to take and to describe what god's word and god is able to do look at this other piece i know i said i was done but let me give you another one the power of the word of god is not to be underestimated brothers and sisters ecclesiastes um chapter 3 and verse 14 says i perceive that whatever god does endures forever 
Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. Um, God has done it so that people fear before him. Listen, God's word, he said, look at the rain and the snow, how it falls and waters the earth, causing for seed, causing for the agriculture, the crops to grow, giving seed to the sower, bread for them to eat. God says, so too um, shall be my word. Or so too is my word that comes out of my mouth. He says, it shall not return to me empty. It's not going to come back empty, but it's going to accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I for which I sent it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word is a powerful word. We thank you for your word is an effective word. God, that whatever you said um, and set your word out to do your word, it will do it. So we thank you now in Christ Jesus name. We pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, listen here. I don't know about you. But this here passage of scripture, it takes and, it, and, and man, it, it just encourages me, you know, to hang on and hold on. You know, when God speaks what he says, you just better believe that it is going to come to pass. When he says it, um, you can rest assured that it's going to happen. Um, our, our job becomes to wait or our job becomes to work while we're waiting. Our job becomes to serve. Our job becomes to just believe and anticipate what God is going to do. And I pray that this word tonight is falling on fresh and fertile, fertile soil. Well, listen, my brothers and my sisters, I don't know about you, but this was a powerful, powerful word of God. And I pray that it encourages somebody to keep on holding on, to hang in there. God's word is effective. It will do exactly what God has set out for it to do. Bless his holy name. Our job becomes to wait. Our job becomes to work. Our job becomes to serve because eventually it's going to manifest in our lives. Well, I want to thank you again for joining us for our triumphant Tuesdays in the word. We thank you for your contributions, your tithes, your offering. Remember to fulfill your divine obligation and we praise God mightily for you. We praise God mightily for you. Listen, you can come and you can join us Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. Our virtual worship will be live streaming on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter Live. And then for those members who have began to come back to the sanctuary, uh, amen, we, we, our doors are open, 9 o'clock a.m., 9 o'clock a.m. Come on in and worship here at the sanctuary. But if you come, remember, we're social distancing in the sanctuary. We're wearing our masks. There's plenty of, of hand sanitizers uh, uh, for you to use um, to make sure that you keep your hands sanitized. Amen. As we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Remember to pray for this country. Pray for one another. Uh, we thank God for each of you. We love you uh, in Jesus. Stay healthy. Stay safe and stay prayed up. I love you. Peace.